What's up guys, welcome to today's video where I'm gonna to talk to you about how to catch more fish on a chatterbait, some mistakes to avoid, and a couple of pro tips on how to get more out of your chatterbaits. Fish on! That's a toad, brother. Golly! All right, so before we jump into today's video, I gotta thank the folks at Shimano for making this video possible. Guys, I couldn't do what I'd do if it wasn't for the support of my amazing sponsors. So be sure to check out the extensive line of products from the folks at Shimano. All right, so let's talk about chatterbaits. Um, first and foremost, the chatterbait is one of the hottest baits uh, on the market today. There's a ton of videos out there on YouTube, top five mistakes to avoid, top three tips for fishing, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna talk to you about a little bit of all of that, all right? So I wanna talk to you about the three biggest mistakes that I see folks making uh, with chatterbaits kind of up front. I'm gonna, right, the number one mistake that I see people making is that they fish too heavy of a chatterbait. For me, probably the most popular size is three eighths of an ounce, okay? Three eighths of an ounce is 99% of my chatterbait fishing. If I wanna go a little bit heavier, I'll go to a quarter. And if I wanna go even heavier than that, I'll jump up to a half ounce. Now, one of the, the reasons for that is a lot of times folks are fishing chatterbaits in shallow water. They're fishing it over grass. And if it's too heavy, it's going to bind up. It's going to be hard to keep up in the water column. It's going to be hard to avoid getting buried up in the grass or running into cover. And it hangs up easier the heavier it is. And so for me, I fish as light a chatterbait as I can get away with. But one of the things that I also do is always add a trailer to give that bait a little bit more bulk and a little bit more lift so it stays up in the water column. I can fish it slower, but then when I get ready to burn it uh, and put my rod tip down, that trailer also serves to create a little bit of drag to keep it from running up to the surface. So we'll talk about that in another video when I really get into how to fish them, sticking your rod tip in the water, things like that. But for the today's video, I want to talk about you know the kind of the things you should avoid okay first of all fish as light a chatterbait uh as you can get away with in fact in some cases i've moved over to this uh mini max deal that's even smaller than that and i've got a pro tip for you guys for these type of baits if you'll hang out to the end of the video the second mistake that i see people making is that they use the wrong rod and for me uh, I've experimented a lot, and fortunately for me, I've got a great relationship with the folks at Shimano, great relationship with G. Loomis, and G. Loomis makes what I consider the perfect chatterbait rod. Now, that chatterbait rod is seven foot four. Uh, it's a three eighths to three quarters an ounce fast action rod. Now, it's a fast action rod, but it's on the moderate side. So, if you can only have one rod, I would say something like a lipless crank or a seven foot four, even a seven foot five, seven foot six, uh, fast to, or down to even a little bit more of a moderate action rod uh, is gonna go a little bit further or give you a little bit more flexibility. Now, I'm a firm believer in fishing braided line. I get more sensitivity. If I want the fluorocarbon feel, I just add a fluorocarbon leader. And by and large, I fish a fluorocarbon leader. And by and large, I fish a fluorocarbon leader uh, exclusively. I will talk about a little bit later in the video in my pro tips um, when I go direct braid and why you should consider doing the same thing. Uh, but for the most part, early season, I like a 6-2 to 1 gear ratio reel on this rod that's specifically designed for chatterbaits by the folks at G. Loomis. Now, uh, a close second to that is a good, if you're going to be pinpoint casting, if you're fishing a lighter jig, if you're not making as long a cast, a 7 foot, 7 foot 2, a uh, medium heavy, moderate action rod is a great chatterbait rod. In fact, a lot of rods that are designed for lipless cranks uh, do a really good job of pulling double duty uh, as a chatterbait rod. And so those are rods that you can go with. I don't like to go as soft as a crankbait rod because I think a lot of times a crankbait rod, you set the hook and you don't have enough power to really bury the hook in there. Uh, and you just always feel behind. The reason that I want a little bit of a moderate action out of it is when that chatterbait runs into something, it's got that flexibility to deflect a little bit and, uh, and, and keep on going. Okay, so number one mistake, fishing too heavy of a chatterbait and not adding a trailer. My favorite trailer is a Zocco uh, from uh, the folks at Yamamoto. I love that paired with a jackhammer uh, or a thunder cricket. It's just turned out to be my favorite trailer. In fact, if I wanna get even a little bit more lift, if I want to fish the bait a little bit slower, then I'm going to opt for more of a paddle tail style uh, Zocco, which is going to give me a little bit more lift, let me fish it a little bit slower. And again, I'll talk about that a little bit at the end of the video in my pro series uh, tip uh, tips about chatterbaits. Now, the next mistake that I see people making a lot is 
hyper focusing on color, okay? I think that there's flashy, that there's bright, and then there's dark and contrasted. Now, are there seasonal colors that really kick butt? Uh, for example, like this fire crawl right there in the spring and the fall, does it catch more fish? Possibly. Is it? Does it give you more confidence so therefore you think you're gonna catch more fish? Absolutely. But for me, there's really two ends of the spectrum. I like a flashy, uh, lighter colored bait and I like a darker, you know, uh, more subdued bait. Uh, the muddier the water or the brighter the sun, ironically enough, the more I like to go to a darker bait. The clearer the water, I like to go to a darker bait, even go to a black. So really for me, it's four or five basic colors. I like a green pumpkin with a green pumpkin skirt. Uh, I like to mix it up with this shad color right here, especially if I'm fishing uh, in the pads post-spawn. And again, I'll talk about that in a minute. And um, obviously, Cody Henley just destroyed the world, kind of let the cat out of the bag. It wasn't a real big secret. Gene Jensen's been talking about it a long time. Lots of folks have been talking about it a lot of time. But that golden shiner color um, with the Tennessee shad um, Zocco trailer for me is by far, uh, this is actually my favorite color trailer for that golden shiner, uh, or even for the shad color, the... Uh, the, the Tennessee shad. So I like to have something that's shad or natural colored, add a little color to it if you're imitating a, a brim uh, or other types of bait fish. Uh, I like something dark if I'm gonna bump it along the bottom. I like something dark if I'm gonna fish it through uh, heavy cover and deeper water. And I like something dark if I'm gonna drop it down to the grass and kind of rip it out of there. It's just something that I really like. I, if I'm gonna fish it in grass, I feel like I get away with it a little bit more if the grass catches onto it and not standing out as much with the dark bait as it does with the bright colored bait. And again, you can jump into the hype wagon with the fire crawls and all those things. I think that those things have some seasonal applicability and they're worth investing in. I just don't think they outperform your good old fashioned standard green pumpkin or black and your good old fashioned, um, you know, shad color. Uh, this color right here actually caught more fish for me. Uh, than any other color so far this year. It's just a natural shad uh, with a crystal uh, colored Yamamoto Zako on it. And I've killed them on that. Now this this uh, golden shiner color does do really well. And I'm going to put it to work here in South Carolina for my second uh, leg of the Catch-22 uh, challenge. But man, this thing right here is the deal. Okay. Now let's get into a couple of the pro tips. Because again, I want to keep this video relatively short. Give you something you can use and some you know get you back out there fishing okay if i'm gonna fish heavy cover or if i know i'm fishing for really big fish um i like to switch to the project z and the main reason that i like to switch to the project z is they have this straight wire with the wraps on it to the blade and uh it just is a little bit stronger now you'll notice with the jackhammer and the mini maxes and some of them they've gone back to this little wire snapper that wire snap is the way that the jackhammer comes so let me show you a pro tip if you just absolutely have more confidence in the jackhammer and you don't want to go back to the Project Z or if you don't want to fish your, you know, the classic chatterbait, uh, take this and fish it just like you do a spinnerbait, a light wire spinnerbait when you're fishing for big fish. Take that snap and just get a split ring. And this is a little bit bigger split ring than I normally use, but I needed something big enough to show in the video. And just drop it over that deal. Tie your line onto that. And then what will happen is, is that split ring will hold that thing from opening up. Uh, in fact, on a 22 inch fish that I caught in Florida, that on that white bait, it almost completely opened up just from an eight pound fish. And so I immediately took my, my pliers, I opened up my tackle box, I took a split ring off, I threw it over the top of that, and I didn't have any problems, any more problems the rest of the day. So if you just find yourself a split ring that's gonna sit right on that collar, that's gonna keep that thing from opening up should you hook a big fish, uh, that's going to go a long ways. Now, I talked earlier about going into the pads, and I talked about going uh, after those fish in thicker cover. That's when I like to switch back to a Project Z, you know, or even the classic chatterbait that has that more rigid uh, connection to it. And that's when I go straight braid. I like to go as light as 40, but usually 50, 60 pound braid. And I like to actually drop down to a little bit shorter rod because I don't want to make as long a cast. If I make super long casts in pads or thick grass, you just invariably hook up way away from you. So if I'm fishing in shallow water uh, cover or especially shallow pads, uh, I like to go back to the Project Z uh, or something with that more substantial connection in it. Uh, and in some cases, even going back to the, uh, going over to the Strike King Thunder Cricket. Um, and that's primarily the two uh, chatterbaits or bladed jigs um, that I like to use. So 
again, when I do that, I like to go to a shorter rod and a little bit thicker braid, and I like to go to a faster gear ratio reel. There's three reasons for that. One, if I have a longer rod, I'm gonna make longer casts. If I make longer casts, I'm gonna hook up way further away from me. And if I hook a fish way away from me, I'm gonna set the hook and then I'm gonna fight my way to it and I'm gonna spook all those fish in the middle. So I highly suggest you either sit down in your kayak or your boat, you ease along and you make just a little short pot cast. All the pockets, you know, maybe one or two pockets away from you to give yourself a little bit of stealth, but don't make, you know, 150 foot cast, 100 yard cast across these lily pads. You hook up a fish way over there, you spook everything in the middle and you just hang up a lot more. So I force myself to use a little bit shorter rod seven foot seven foot two i like to go to that again 40 to 60 pound braid a lot of times i'm in the 40 pound range i know i fish a lot lighter braid than most people a lot of times but i can get to the fish uh, in my kayak if i hang up but i do fish a lot of 50 and 60 and in that case i'll just tie a palomar knot tie it directly to the blade uh, do a couple half hitches in front of it to really lock that knot down every now and then i'll dab a little dab of super glue on there and in that case i'm almost always going to go with that paddle tail style uh, trailer as well with the Zocco because I want to pu push that skirt out make it look like a bait fish I want to give myself a little bit more lift and also when I throw it up into those holes and I'm reeling it and I kill it I want the blade to create some fall but I also want that tail wagging on the way down and I also like that faster gear ratio reel so that when I get ready to raise my rod tip and burn it up out of that hole skip it across the next thick area and then drop it into the next hole I like to be able to catch up to that bait so I fish a little bit faster gear ratio, anything from a 7.4 all the way up to like an 8.2 to 8.5 to 1 gear ratio. In fact, one of the rods that I kind of treated myself to, and you don't necessarily need a rod like this substantial, but I treated myself to an NRX uh, in a 7 foot, and I wanted a fast action, medium heavy, uh, threw a titanium on it that's an 8 to 1 gear ratio. Uh, and because I'm going to spend months with this thing in my hand, and I'm going to make 10 or 15,000 casts, uh, maybe even a week with this thing, I invested in something that's a little bit lighter, a little bit more sensitive, and something that's not. It's going to be, you know, easier on my shoulders that ain't getting any younger. Uh, any seven foot, medium heavy, moderate fast. Again, now that I'm in the pads and I'm fishing in thicker vegetation, I actually want a little bit faster rod. I want the ability to turn that fish's head a little quicker. I want a little bit more power in the butt section, so I bump up to a medium heavy and sometimes even a heavy. I want that faster gear ratio so that I've got the ability to burn that bait. Uh, when I want to so guys, that's it. That's my tips on how to fish more effectively with a chatterbait Really the only way you can fish a chatterbait wrong in late winter into early spring is to not fish it at all But I will suggest that you slow down a little bit that you take it along the cover the bottom the treetops the brush whatever you're doing and fish as light a bait as you can get away with i think that if it stays in the strike zone a little bit longer especially in that colder water it convinces more fish to eat it so fish as light a lure as you can choose the right rod for the job always add a trailer add a little bit of extra lift or kick uh, by adding the paddle tail in shallow water and uh, guys that's it hope you guys enjoyed this video y'all do me a favor leave a comment in the comment section Tell me if you like this type of video, if you want to see more of them. But for now, I'm going to load my stuff up, get back out on the water, and catch some bass.